You ever have one of those weeks where it just feels like you didn't really do anything? This is one of those weeks. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 38 of What's on the Bench Weekly. If you're not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on. Some finished, some not finished, some not even really started. And this is a great example of that. Uh, here is the Tamiya Blazing Blazer. This is an original. It's got all the JIS screws to prove it. <laughs> it's old. Uh, this is one of their first models. It was the, uh, it's the same basic chassis layout as the original Toyota Hilux um from a billion years ago it's older than i am i think or about the same age actually so um we're in about the same shape <laughs> which is pieces <laughs> um but here it is it's uh not seen much effort since the last video where i did some very simple body repairs you can still see some of the low spots uh that have been filled and um there's still a big seam of uh two-part epoxy from Tamiya there that needs to be sanded and uh, getting ready to prime this body so it's ready for paint. Um, but today I thought I would pull it out yep, and uh, start disassembling the chassis or getting a better look at some of the things that are there. I have a manual. Uh, I downloaded one from the internet and uh, we'll be able to sort of piece this together as we go. There are a lot of pieces that I don't think our standard on here. We might as well just take the body off and get a better look at the chassis. Like I said, there's a lot of parts here that don't appear to be standard. Now, um, that of course is fully in relation to whatever is going on right here. Uh, what is going on here? I think this is supposed to be a couple of the shift levers and they've been locked out. So whoever owned this before I did and probably before Show Dog owned it, because this used to be a Show Dog um, a collection piece, uh, locked out the transmission. So we're going to have to get rid of all of this and find some pieces to replace that. And that's going to be a big challenge. Not one that I'm not up for though. Yeah, that's right. Um, so let's start by taking some of these things apart and, uh, getting a better look at things. I think today's focus will be the transmission itself. So we're gonna get that out of the chassis. Look at the size of this bell crank setup for one moment here. It starts here and goes all the way to the front. That is one messed up long bell crank arm. Wow. Kudos to Tamiya for making the longest bell crank arm I have ever seen. <laughs> okay, uh, let's... Um, get this partially taken apart. Probably won't be entertaining for you to watch, but I'll film it anyway. Okay. Before I go much further, I just wanted to show off the quality of the soldering job that whomever owned this originally did. I was just left bare, <laughs> just out there. Here we go, we're soldering now. So uh, transmission is out, as you can see. Um, there's obviously a fair bit of cleanup that we're gonna need to do here. So um, what I'm gonna do is sort of a, a, a attempt to get some of these things off. I can't believe Oh my gosh. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is awesome already. So, um, original boot, motor boot, this would go over the, uh, the, um, the motor in order to keep all the dust out and keep it clean. Um, that seems to be original and in pretty good shape. Wow, I'm impressed. Now, interesting find under here. Associate, this is a team associated off-road stock brushed motor looks to be like i've never i've never seen one uh so this is probably quite old i'm gonna have to do some research in fact actually if you are aware of where this motor may have come from or what it was in originally or um how much these cost or if they're any good post a comment down below you know i love reading through your feedback 
I try to answer as many of them as I can. Okay, things are gonna get messy now, so let's get some shop towels out. I'm already filthy. We'll see what we can find inside this transmission. Because this is, this is getting exciting now. Um, it's always cool to see these original parts from something that is very old. I'm just gonna remove that, what would be a transfer case plate. No transfer case is required here. Um, this is all cast metal. And then this is, this is like a silicone coating uh, that's been added. And I think Tamiya did ask people to do that. It was a fairly common thing, so. Let's start by uh, removing the motor. That's probably going to be the easiest thing here. I'm surprised they've got a 540 can on here. Um, I didn't know that these worked with that, but I guess maybe the original Bruiser uh, accepted the larger motors. I can't remember exactly. Now you can see this thing in all of its bizarro glory. Okay, now this obviously was not factory. This is some sort of hack to keep it locked in a certain gear. There we go, we can remove all of this because that's not how it's supposed to be. I don't even know if this is part of it. I don't think, I don't think that's part of it. Uh, this definitely is, that's your spring-loaded shift mechanism. Very cool to see that. All of these gaskets are original and I'm going to endeavor to not break any of them because they're worth a pretty penny. A lot of pretty pennies on this show. <laughs> All right, let's remove some more of these hex screws. What the hex? I was not expecting to see those. So maybe this has been rebuilt. Got some nuts holding on some of this hardware. Don't know what that's all about. I'm, I'm being extra careful because of course, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna break any of these things. It's not like you can just walk into a hobby shop and go, hello, I'd like a replacement for a 1979 Blazing Blazer, please. I should get out the manual so I actually know what I'm taking off. This is riveting stuff. I can tell. And I'm sure I'm gonna have to remove all this silicone so I can actually take these pieces apart. Although it is weird to see hex screws. I, I can't imagine these were stock. But maybe I'm wrong, who knows? Uh, we may have to go off camera here and slice through some of this carefully with a sharp hobby blade so we can actually get at some of these bits and pieces inside. So. Stand by, I'm gonna clean my hands, and then we're gonna to get to uh, the next steps here. This is going to be a messy process, uh, but uh, necessary. If I'm gonna be restoring it, I need to get all of this taken apart uh, and cleaned and, you know, fixed. So anyway, uh, I've sliced through that first row of silicone bead uh, to reveal the inside, and it does look pretty clean uh, inside, which is good. It is, this is old stuff, so I'm gonna have to be really careful. Look at all the gunk in there. That's nasty. That's nasty. Uh, but the gears appear to be in good shape, as you can see. Um, pretty clean for their age. No teeth missing, as far as I can tell, so it hasn't been driven hard, which is good. Um, there's a lot of disassembly here, so I think we're gonna turn the camera off and uh, get through all of that disassembly uh, on my own time instead of on your time because this is not exciting to watch. It smells about like what you would expect. Stale vomit. <laughs> it's really nasty. Uh, this is by far going to be one of my more uh, interesting rebuilds because uh, it's it's super gross. It's, it's absolutely disgusting in here. Um, <laughs> And uh, I mean, the good news is it seems to all be intact. It doesn't seem like there's anything missing, which is good. Uh, there's a lot of little tiny springs and uh, lots of little tiny bits and pieces that are definitely going to uh, be used again. So they're gonna need to be cleaned. Like everything is just disgusting. Ugh. 
and uh, you know I'm gonna have to clean the exterior of all of these pieces to get the silicone off. Uh, it's clear that when Tamiya built this, they built it sort of with the intention of, okay, don't ever go in there again. So we're gonna have to degrease everything and uh, get some cleanup going because it's uh, definitely seen better days. Let's, uh, let's cut and we'll start degreasing. Can't even touch the camera. My hands are filthy. Okay, we've got everything disassembled now and it's all soaking in its own juices. <laughs> I'm actually using this WD-40 uh, cleaner and degreaser. It is non-corrosive, safe on plastics, and uh, seems to already be doing a pretty decent job of cleaning off most of that serious gunk. Uh, everything will need to be brushed and cleaned individually and then uh, re-greased and or you know re-lubricated uh, but for the time being we're going to let that set in there for a little while and just kind of really get all that grease off of these parts before we go any further. This is a big job and uh, not one for the faint of heart of course um, but uh, certainly uh, necessary for this project because I do want to make this factory fresh. Um, so we're stripping it all the way down. We're starting from scratch. We're going to go through the manual and rebuild it one step at a time. So this is only the first step of many in getting us to that final product. But guaranteed the results are going to speak for themselves. And I cannot wait to make this functional again. It's going to be really exciting. Thank you so much for watching. Not a very exciting week. I am not going to lie, but uh, sometimes this is necessary stuff that's on the bench. It's not all going to be really fun finished trucks. You've got to do some of the heavy lifting in order to get to that final product. And this is the sort of thing that while it isn't very cool, you got to do it. So Hope you'll uh, stick around. This is going to be a fun one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.